Mark, you have delivered stronger than expected interim results. What have been the key drivers behind that? Well, firstly, I like your comment about stronger than expected. In our case, we expected to deliver these results, and I think that's the first thing. The confidence of the management team in the strategy that we outlined, I think, has been very important, and we've delivered against our expectations, which I think is the most important thing. So, commitment to a strategy that had been well articulated. Behind that, the restructuring that we've done in the group, 30% less assets, delivering production above where we were in 2012, has underpinned a 36% cost reduction for the group. And for us, I think that's been the key, is keeping our focus on the right things, making sure things are done the right way, and at the same time making sure we keep our eye on safety, environment, and the social factors that are so important in maintaining that sort of performance. You're targeting $1.9 billion of improvements this year. How is that progressing? On the $1.9 billion, progress has been very good. When we outlined the plan in December, we still had to do a lot of the detailed planning. In February, we identified that of the $1.9 billion improvement, $300 million that had been identified as an operating cost was actually going to be a capital cost saving. So the only real change has been on some of the classifications of the dollars that'll be saved. But we're on track for the 1.9 billion. In the first quarter, not on the run rate because we were still putting the plans in place. Second quarter, very strong improvement. And that improvement is going into the third quarter. So very confident we're on track and very pleased with the results that we've uh, announced at the half year. So if we take a step back and look at the wider picture for a moment, does this mean that things are looking more positive for the industry as a whole? I think from an industry perspective, there's been some encouragement. Prices are up on a few commodities, but I think we've got to be very careful. It, it's not clear or consistent. Um, I think there's encouraging signs, certainly from our diamonds perspective, we've seen some positive signs, but I think we have to remain cautious. There's still a lot of uncertainty out there, both from a political perspective, an economic perspective. So we've got to stick to the game plan and make sure we continue to deliver. The good news is it's been a great first half, and I used the, the rugby analogy. It's half time, we're leading, but we've got another 40 minutes to play in terms of delivery of the strategy this year. We're going to run the 80 minutes out. And if the market continues to improve, we'll have done it extremely well. If it remains tough, then we've done the right things and positioned ourselves for success in either case. And I think that's the right way to play this. Back in February, you outlined several initiatives to strengthen the balance sheet. What progress have you made against the goals you outlined? Well, clearly with the half year results, we started at 12.9 billion and we showed that we're down to 11.7 billion at the half year. And if I include the sale of niobium phosphate, and that cash will come through later this year, then we would be at 10.3 billion. That's well ahead of where we forecast to be. We said on a full year basis that we'd generate at least $400 million free cash flow. We've actually delivered a $1.1 billion free cash flow from the business in the first half. So that's been an exceptional effort. We also restructured the debt and took about $100 million of that debt down. So that got us from 12.9 to 11.7. So we certainly expect to get through the 10.3 billion that we now are positioned at with the first sale with other disposals taking us through that number and into something above 9 billion. So we're very pleased with the progress we've made. Still a lot of work to be done, but for us, we're generating cash each and every day. Disposals is about taking the debt down as quick as we can. As you realign the portfolio around 16 assets across De Beers, PGMs and Copper, you're also selling assets in what is a very challenging environment. Are you still confident that you're gonna hit your $3 billion target for disposals this year? Yes, I am. I think uh, if you look at our first disposal, the $1.5 billion for niobium phosphate, it shows that the assets that we've identified for sale are high quality. 
the bidding processes that we've set up are very effective and really have established a competitive process to achieve those sorts of numbers. But at the same time, we're not going to sell an asset for anything significantly under real value. And so the discipline will hold. Now the good thing from our perspective is we're generating cash at the operating level. So that gives us the ability to be tougher or as tough as we want to be on value. And I think that's the good news for shareholders. So maybe it'll take a little bit longer, but we're getting to our net debt targets quicker than anticipated because of both the combination of cash from the business and getting the right price for the disposals that we do agree to. Can you explain the driving factors behind the 27% fall in EBIT for the first half to $1.4 billion? The main driver for the decrease was the negative impact from uh, lower commodity prices to the tune of $1.2 billion. That was offset by weaker producer uh, currencies, which uh, benefited to the tune of uh, $900 million. De Beers had the much stronger sales, uh, offset by lower production at uh, Cishan, and uh, lower production as well at Los Bonques, which uh, saw some very heavy snow. We also had the benefit of $300 million of uh, cash cost reduction, as we got the benefit of the initiative which were launched at the beginning of the year. One of the key objectives that you announced back in February was strengthening the balance sheet. So the question is, how strong is it today? Very strong performance in the first six months of the year. The level of net debt declined from $12.9 billion at the end of December 2015 to $11.7 billion at the end of June. We got the benefit of half a billion dollars of working capital reduction in the first six months, lower capex, but also the benefit of the cash improvement initiative that uh, we launched at the beginning of uh, the year. We also got the benefit of the liability management exercise that uh, we uh, initiated back in uh, March. The benefit was $120 million. In terms of capex, for the full year, we're expecting between $2.5 and $2.7 billion and expect a further reduction next year below $2.5 billion. If we factor the expected proceed from the sale of niobium and phosphate, the level of net debt is around $10.3 billion. When do you expect Anglo-American to return to an investment grade credit rating? Our objective remains to regain a very strong investment grade credit rating. We have made some very good progress in terms of cash flow generation, in terms of net debt reduction and in terms of disposal program and we are well on track to see an upgrade in the coming months. You have announced further impairments today in your coal business of $1.2 billion. First, can you talk us through that figure and will this affect the sale process for these assets? We have revised downwards our long-term pricing assumption for cooking coal while we expect stronger near-term prices. The impairments that we took are for Moramba and Grovner all relate to the revision in terms of long-term prices. We value our assets on the balance sheet on the standalone basis, and that's independent to the way a potential acquirer would value the asset. Turning to safety, is your safety performance being impacted by the restructuring of the organisation, and, and is zero harm still achievable? I think the first thing I need to reflect on in the safety conversation is where we've come from. In the last three years, we've seen a 60% reduction in fatalities, and we're proud of the improvement, but not satisfied with where we are. Unfortunately, we've had six fatalities in the first six months of the year. That's concerning. We've done a lot of work to try and understand if the restructuring and the noise around the organisation about those type of actions are having an impact. We don't believe so, but what we are doing is really working hard to making sure the messages are right, that people understand that safety has to be one, two and three in terms of the priority list so that we continue that improvement trend and we eliminate all incidents from the workplace. So I think the message is clear, we've just got to make sure that people understand that and know 
that we expect to see the best levels of safety maintained and improved irrespective of the circumstances. And I think that's our, that's our most important message. So zero harm is still achievable in your mind? Absolutely. So looking ahead, what do you expect for the second half of the year? Based on the platform that we've built in the business over the last three years, and in particular with the rapid changes we've introduced in the first half, we would expect for full year 2016 to be producing almost 12% more product for the year than we produced back in 2012. That's from 30% less assets and with staff levels 40% lower than they were in 2012. If I put those numbers together, it helps people understand how we've delivered a 36% unit operating cost reduction across the global operations. And that's even with holding De Beers back in terms of its production capability because of wanting to match the diamond market. So a significant improvement right across the board. So the foundations from the first half will see us do at least 5% better on production and a continuation of the good, well, the good and strong operating performance that we've delivered in the first half. So I'm very optimistic and very pleased with the progress we've made so far.